failures, you don't get too caught up in them either because you're going to have successful plays. You're going to have negative plays. But if you play the game and you play the game long enough in life, not just outside of a marriage or friendship or relationship, if you play it long enough and you keep playing and, you be, and you're persistent, you're going to have more success than failures. What's up, Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special <clears throat> guest with us today. He is no stranger of the podcast. He is a husband. He's a father. He's a podcaster. And uh, he's an avid sports fan and also a big fan of music. I love listening to his podcast. Came across his brother maybe a couple of years, maybe some five, six years ago, maybe. Um, <clears throat> and I've been listening to the podcast ever since then. He did a podcast episode recently about this parallel between love and uh, marriage and relationships and football. And when I listened to it, I'm like, wait a minute, we got to talk <laughs> about this. Cause I wrote a whole freaking ebook on it. And uh, that's a long story. We're going to get into that as well. We'll talk about that. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to 12 Kyle. What's going on, my brother? What's going on, Sean? What's good? What's happening? What's cracking, man? Great to be on here again, man. First and foremost, thank you for having me again, man. Always a pleasure, man. So I'm looking forward to this, man. Like you said, talking a little love and sports. So, I mean, what could be better? <laughs> no, right? Yeah, man, for sure. Uh, yeah, love and football is what I want to discuss today. And if you haven't heard Kyle's episode, go check that out, out uh, as well on his podcast. But anyway, we'll make sure we get that linked up in the show, no show notes so you can hear that episode as well. But in this segment, uh, I wrote a book, Love and Football, some years ago because I'm a huge fan. But the only thing with that was I was married to my ex-wife. <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the only thing. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm thinking about rewriting it because her name was on the cover and she kind of okay. helped me write this thing and all sort of stuff. But so now I'm doing like a 2023 edition, especially with the mm -hmm. playoffs now. Um what let's talk about this because I believe there are so many parallels. So when you when you did that podcast, I said, we have to do this because you caught on to the parallels between healthy relationships and football. And mm -hmm. what inspired you to do that episode? Well, I, I, I really, I was doing some reading. I came across an article that just kind of um, it was actually something that I'd written on my blog. I have a blog. I, I don't really write on the blog that much, but I wrote it, man, probably like in 2018 or something like that. And I was talking about how, you know, life parallels the game of football. And, and in one particular instance, you know, you talk about love and you talk about, you know, the teamwork that it takes between um, you and I both married. So I'm coming from the perspective of the, 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 the teamwork that it takes between uh, husband and wife um, partners, if you will, um, you know, people in a relationship and just how, you know, vital that is. And it's very similar to the teamwork that you need because, you know, we all see the touchdowns and stuff on TV, uh, when somebody scores, you have to understand too, having played the game and I played football from the age of eight, all the way through college at uh, South Carolina state university. Um, when that person scores, they didn't just score by themselves. It took, 10 other people to make that happen so you know the guy who goes into the end zone he gets the glory he gets the name you know he gets the highlight or whatever like that but there's 10 other guys that at the very least did their jobs to help him get into the end zone and you know um for us marriages are, uh, and, and relationships are a lot the same way like that like it takes so much and at the end of the day when we cross that goal line whatever the goal is um we all get a chance to celebrate now, the focus may be on one person, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you know, it didn't take the help of others to get you there. So, you know, that was kind of the premise of it. And I just kind of took it and ran with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like when you use that touchdown analogy, because you said, like you said, it's 10 other people that help you reach that goal mm -hmm. and, and marriage. Because sometimes I've even heard people talk about 
them being jealous of their spouse and their marriage and stuff. And to me, I don't get it because I'm like, if she scored a touchdown, let her do a little victory dance. You win too. Yeah. Right. You know, when when we when when one wins, we all win. Um, I think uh one of the things, and it's funny, Sean, because it's like I record and I'm sure you've probably done this before. I recorded that episode. And then after you, after I recorded, I was like, dang, I should have said this. Like it was one other piece that I wanted to say and I forgot to put it. I was like, I'm not, cause I never go back and re edit stuff or put stuff in. So I was like, I'm gonna just let it rock with what it was. But, um, you know, one of the things that I didn't say on that episode was like how, you know, we should in every instance, you know, champion just much of what, like what you just said, you know, champion our significant others, you know, because if my wife gets a promotion, that's a win for me too, because like, I'm genuinely happy for her. I need to do what I can to uplift her and be her biggest advocate and vice versa. If I get a promotion then it should be the same. So I think a lot of times in relationships, sometimes when we see what's on the outside, we get into that comparison type stuff. And I think that's, uh, that can do more harm than good because you know, what goes on on your team, the Cleveland Browns, didn't happen on my team, New York Giants. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and, and same for what goes on in your house, what works for you in your house, doesn't necessarily work for me in my house. You know, I can take bits and pieces of your game plan. I can take bits and pieces of what you put out as far as your content, things, because you drop gems all the time on social media, um, damn near every day. And you, you're you very, the thing I love about what you do is you're very transparent about you know, where you are and where your wife, where you guys are in your relationship and your friendship. And I think that's the key. And not only that, but you're very transparent about where you were. Like you mentioned your ex-wife, you mentioned on this podcast several times about how you, you know, were at, you know, a certain level, if you will, social media wise, whatever the case may be. And then all that had to be torn down. And this is, you know, not a, I, I'm not even gonna say you, I think you used the word rebrand, but I wouldn't even call it a rebrand. It's more of a rebuild. And, um, you know, you're not scared to put that information out there. So you drop gems. And, you know, one of the things that I always take from you is that, you know, you, your success is, is shared. And I think, you know, that's one of the things that I didn't really hammer in on, on that particular episode, but I wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, the success you know, the success and the failures, because there will be failures in a, in a relationship and a friendship and a marriage. And, you know, you got to carry that other person. Mm. Yeah, man, that is good because, and, and we talked about the whole jealousy piece. Um, and the funny thing about that is with, with football, whoever scores, like you say, that's, that's a team. That's seven points. That's six points for the, the team, not just you, right. just because you didn't score, but, I know sometimes there can be jealousy because someone else is maybe uh, blowing up career wise. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone is still trying to find himself, you know, so that kind of can play into your relationship. But uh, have you ever ran across any anything like that where jealousy played a part into someone's marriage or relationship? Yeah, I had a friend once who um, he was at a situation where and I think we all kind of go through this where they both got married relatively young and as their careers started to progress um hers started to grow a little bit more and then he took a step back because he realized the career path that he was in he no longer wanted to be in so he took a pivot and he was down for a couple of years but when he got back up he decided to get out of corporate america go to work for himself and he turned a very small business into a very very profitable business. And, you know, there's a lot of kudos and, you know, props that came along with that being recognized in the community uh, for what he did. And, you know, his wife, um, she didn't handle that that well. Um, I don't think it was anything. I, I, and I'll give you an example. I remember they had an argument and he said, she said to, he told me that she said to him, you're throwing this in my face. And he was like, what are you talking about? And he didn't realize like later on until later on, like she was talking about his success or, you know, the things that he was accomplishing. And his thing wasn't about, you know, this is for me. He's like, this is for us. He said, it's more money. I'm Cause he went from, you know, not making a lot of money to making a lot more money and bringing money into the house. So they were able to afford more things. And, you know, he he's not a really material possession type of guy, but he 
he was able to you know, provide more and do he's like you know you never complain about me buying you this or us going to this place or whatever like that taking these trips and he's like now all of a sudden it's a problem and she i just really don't think that she could handle the aspect of the she was jealous of his success and i think that was something that she probably should have gotten on board with and you know celebrated him for it and it became an issue and it became a small issue that in turn became a bigger issue and then things started to go downhill from there it wasn't the reason why they broke up i'll put it like that but you know ultimately it led to them you know furthering each other apart communication infidelity the whole nine mm, yeah yeah sometimes that can happen uh which is funny because i remember there was a time you talk about me being transparent i remember when i first rebranded my youtube channel mm -hmm. uh my wife looked at it as a hobby Okay. And it was cool and she supported it. She's like, yeah, that's cool or whatever. And we had some miscommunication issues because I was starting to upload content and she was like, wait a minute, we, we got to get on the same schedule so we can watch these kids and all this other stuff. So we was having some issues with that. But now I'm at a place where she's like, today she's gone. And now <laughs> she, she uses, instead of my hobby, <laughs> she uses your business. Mm-hmm. You know, she said, take some time to work on your business. Today. And it also helps to have paid clients, too. That helps. So, oh, no question. <laughs> yeah. It's not a hobby anymore. You know, so it's it's a, it's a, your business now. But, anyway, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, yeah. Now, I don't know. Um, how, how do you look at marriage from a spiritual perspective? Now, the reason why I say this is because I, I always use the parallel of for my wife and I, uh, it's the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. And I use that as my playbook. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if you don't understand your playbook, it's going to be hard to follow through with those plays on the field when life really hits you. Because if y'all aren't on the same page, if y'all aren't in your playbook, there's going to be some issues. Uh, how do you, do you incorporate any spirituality? Because I, I really don't hear you talk about it too much in your show so where are you with that in, in your marriage i i don't talk about it uh for a specific reason that because your spirituality is something so very personal um and if you, you listen to podcast longer you know i don't talk politics either so you know god and religion and god and politics you know is not something i get into but i'm a very spiritual person i, I believe in god um raised in the AME church coming up. My wife was raised in the church as well. And we attend church regularly. I mean, we obviously fell off because of COVID, but we still tune in and watch and streamline it on Sundays. And we're now at the point now where we go back. Uh, we just started going back a couple of weeks ago, maybe about two months ago, um, started going back to in-person service. We, we mask up and stuff, but we still go to in-person service. Um, and therefore our kids have been able to experience that as well. Uh, what I do as far as, as as far as spirituality for me, um, it's so much an individualistic thing, but I think like it's our friendship is rooted in that, you know, because in essence, we ask God for each other, you know, and I never, I, you know, it's funny, Sean, and I always hear people talk about and, you know, and I'm sure you probably heard it, maybe said it a gazillion times, you know, about people being equally yoked. Mm -hmm. I never could buy into that concept because I think spirituality is such an individual thing that I don't know if we're ever on the same parallel. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we can go to church, man. And my wife, she'll sing. She know every song, you know, every, I mean, the old time joints. I mean, I know Amazing Grace. <laughs> And I know Jesus is love. And that's about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know a lot of gospel songs. I mean, I, but, you know, I, I'll, if it come up on the screen, I'll sit there and lip sync it or whatever like that. Um, but she's the more, I can't even say she's more spiritual because, um, because I'm very spiritual. I mean, I pray and I ask for things and I do believe in, and I'm very deep rooted in my faith. Um, but I think that if we did not have that, our spirituality as a pillar of our foundation, then I don't know that we make it, you know, we're going on 23 years of marriage and we've been together even longer than that. So, but that's a pillar. It's not the standalone thing that keeps us going, but 
it's a pillar. And I mean, like you have to pray, you not only pray for things, you pray for each other, you pray for our kids, um, things of that nature, but you're right. I don't, I don't get into it on the podcast, but no, I'm, I'm very, I'm very spiritual. I trust me. I talk to him. I talk yeah. to him. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. This is, as, as you know, this is a, a, a free flow platform. You know what I'm saying? There's no, Oh judgment. yeah. No question. Yeah. No question. Yeah. And the only reason I ask you about that was because I, I always use that parallel with understanding mm-hmm. your playbook and you know as mm-hmm. a as a former player uh and, and i'm a i'm a fan in the stands you know i i've never played but i've been a fan for maybe mm-hmm. since 10 maybe um and i just realized like how much of this whole playbook i remember one time uh when brett Favre went to the minnesota vikings mm-hmm. now we're talking about brett Favre, right and let's just talk about him from a football perspective, not not what goes on off the field. That's a that's a different show. We're not gonna jump into. Yeah, that's that. that's a whole different show right there. I know what people are gonna say in the comments, so let's not go in the comments about Brett Favre. We 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 going somewhere with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he went to Minnesota, and I'm like arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, but the coach mm-hmm. there at the time. He wasn't going to let Brett Favre play that week because Brett didn't know the playbook. And I was just like, wow, that's that's amazing. To me, that spoke volumes to me because I'm like, not knowing your playbook and being on a new team can cause some kind of friction. So one of the things that brought my wife and I together was our spirituality. And, and mm-hmm. I maybe tweeted about this before, but when we were dating, and this was always a measure for me, I was like, hey, you want to have Bible study? <laughs> now, this isn't to say that I had to preach a sermon or anything. It was more of mm-hmm. us reading a piece of the Bible and coming back the next day or whatever and say, hey, what do you think God is saying to you about this? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and and she stuck with me with that. Like she and like you said, the pillar. Right. And that was one of the things that drew us together was her spirituality. And I was like, okay, she's a big fan of the playbook. So we can always mm-hmm. be on the same page with that. So, yeah, it matters. It matters. And, you know, not only knowing your playbook, but, you know, knowing your personnel, you know, you got to know your wife and she knew you well enough and you knew where you knew her well enough to ask her, Hey, can you read this piece? And what do you think? And then you weren't judgmental and said, well, no, nah, this, you know, you didn't have, probably didn't enforce your, uh, you know, what you thought about that particular scripture that you read. Because the, the, the thing about the Bible is, is that it's up to everyone's interpretation. You and I can read the same scripture and we can get 10 different things out of it and none of the 10 match, you know. So and that's not to say that what I read or what I interpret is different from you and it's wrong. You know, it's just what you see and what you read and what you feel. So, yeah, yeah I yeah. get you on that. Yeah, for sure. And you talked about your team being in New York Giants, right? Mm-hmm. New York Giants. So, so what they going to do? Um, I don't. They, well, they play at the time of this recording. They play later this evening against the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, this will be the third time we played them because they're in our division. I don't think the Giants are going to win because uh, it's tough. And I, I don't think that the Giants match up well with Philly, but don't be surprised if it's a very close game. And the reason why I say this is because one, they're familiar foes. Uh, so those games, so the games that should be blowouts usually aren't. Um, then, and also Philadelphia has not played a meaningful game in a couple of weeks and they were kind of shaky in those games. So, and there's always, you, Sean, you follow football and anybody else listening that follows football every year, there's always a team that, gets to the buy and they get a buy and oh we got a buy and it's a week of rest but i think sometimes you lose a little edge when you're not playing and your body's in your mind is so conditioned to play each week um and you see some teams that come out of a buy and they lose in the first round or that particular round so um could an upset happen it could i would be happy if it does but i mean me being realistic i think the giants probably lose by like a field goal or something like that, but it, it should be a good. It, it it will be a game. I'm I'm confident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I know you're a real football fan because you're being honest despite your team. You know. Oh some yeah. People, yeah. So yeah. I, hey, I'm gonna keep it a re- I'm gonna keep it a beam, man. I, I can't I can't just you know be out here and just be a homer and just you know I think the biggest thing is man, and it's something you don't see. You you're a sports fan like me. You know, 
you turn on TV and you have the, you know, the Shannon Sharps and the Stephen A. Smiths of the world. And these guys, while they may know what they're talking about, they're fans and their fandom clouds the reality of what it is. If I'm speaking to someone as a, if you're coming to me to listen to me talk about sports, I want you to know the real. If I'm giving you just the giant spin or just saying that the Giants can win every game, that's not being realistic. I think you would want to get something that's realistic for me than something that's fake. Um, so no, nah, I'm, I'm very realistic about my team, but I'll tell you what, Sean, uh, nobody expected the Giants to be here. This is a team that was expected to win four, maybe five games this year. And for them to be in the playoffs and play a game on the road, you know, that's something to be said and something to be proud of. So if it all ends today, you know, it's okay. It's good. It's still a great season and it's something to build on for next year. True. Very true. I agree. And you talked about the bye week and you talked about rest. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have, correct me if I'm wrong, you ha all have four kids together? Yes. Yes. Four yes. kids. Three four boys kids. and a girl. Yes. Uh, my wife and I, we have four all together. We have two together, but then we have one apiece from previous relationships and marriage. Mm -hmm. What does you and your wife do for rest? What do y'all do for y'all by week? Man, listen, she rests way more than me. <laughs> <laughs> She rests way more than me. Um, I like the fact that our kids are so much older now. See, like you, you guys got little ones. Like, and it's funny because it wasn't until you put up, you put up a picture one day, because I remember you, hearing you talk about your kids, but I didn't know their ages. And you put the, I think you put up a picture of your sons, and I was like, wow, he's got little guys. Like he don't have no, no big guys. Um, and so our of our four, um. One is in grad school, the other's in undergrad. And then our youngest son is, um, he's a sophomore in high school. And our daughter is, uh, she's the last one. She is in middle school. She's in the sixth grade. So, you know, when it's time to rest or whatever like that, or time to get out of the way of when we have, when we need time for each other, um, you know, we two are already out the house. And then the two that are in the house, they're on their cell phones and they're away and stuff like that. So they, and you know, Sean, they they really do part of my quote unquote rest time is the time to record, you know, podcasts. They do a really good, a great job of clearing space with me. If I say, hey, I'm going to hit record, they don't bother me. You know, they don't bother me. I, I've seen and talked to other podcasters, you know, they're t podcasting and they're talking and stuff. And then the kid comes in and asks them a question. And, you know, that happens. I mean, it, it's it, it actually makes the episode even more real because you know, you see them being in their element, being a parent. But um, nah, man, I, I, I our rest time is uh, like I said, she rests way more than me. She sleeps way more than me. Um, but um, and I, I don't really, I, I mean, I sleep five hours a night, five six hours. And I don't need, I don't need. If I got eight hours of sleep, I'd be honest, I'd be crunky. I mean, uh, grumpy. Um, <laughs> so she, we rest, but we do, do have to carve out that time and um. I have an episode coming out um, probably in a couple of weeks talking about adulting. And I was in that episode, I was talking about that because like, you know, in that rest time, you have to have time for yourself. You have to have time for your spouse. You have to have time for your teammates, if you will, your friends, your homeboys. Um, and you have to have time for yourself too. And I think, you know, when we, we, as we move forward into 2023 and we talk about mental health, I think being an adult, we have to make sure that we're, you know, very ad adamant about that time um, because you have to carve out the time for yourself and time for your spouse and time for your kids and time for your friends too because all of that stuff is needed. Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah, because like you said, we have little kids and I'm jealous because you got older kids. So you didn't already did the work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you good. Yes, man, you know, yes. One day y'all gonna be empty nesters before you know it. Yeah, you know well, man, we say that, man, but you know, the reality is, Sean, is that we 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 really enjoy, especially when the older two come home from school, like we just had over the holidays. Um, you just enjoy that time, but then you also, you know, they got cars and then they I'm going over here and I'm going over there, and I'm like, look, man, I need you home, you know what I'm saying, at a certain time. And oh dad, why I gotta be, you know, I'm in college, why I gotta have a curfew? And I'm like, look, bro, it's we in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Like anything can pop off. I mean, yeah, of course, anything can pop off anyway. But, you know, my city is a, a it's a wild city at, at times. And, you know, we and we don't even live in the city. We live in the suburbs. So it's like even the suburbs can be wild and stuff just happens. So 
the thing I'll say to you about having the little ones, enjoy that time, Sean, because you're going to blink. I kid you not, my brother, you're going to blink and you're going to be taking them to college. You'd be like, man, how did I get from third grade to college? Like just that fast. And so, um, so while I, I enjoy, I immensely enjoy the, them getting older and getting grown. Um, I don't know. I don't necessarily know that I'm looking forward to them leaving the nest. I'll be honest. Cause I love having them at home, love having them at home. And, and you know, they're kids that like to be at home, but then they have time you know, where they got to go out with their friends and their girlfriends and stuff like that. And, and I get it. And I'm not like, no, you can't go, but you know, cause I'm like, Hey, you go, as you, just let me know where you're going. That's all. Um, but yeah, you, you when they get cars and they get licenses, Sean, you worry a whole lot different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I have a 19 year old and uh but she, she's go. she's in Arizona. Yeah. So I yeah, I get it. I'm just like, she'll be 20 this year. I'm thinking, shoot, I got a 20 year old daughter. That's crazy. Uh I'm, mm-hmm. I'm getting old. It's becoming official. Yeah. Um yeah. I, and then one day you go out walking on the out. Man, come on. <laughs> yeah, we have a hey, grown look man your, talk right your now. Your face says it all. <laughs> the look on your face says it all. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh my god, how have we gotten here so soon? Man, I, I you know, Sean, I, I try my best not to even think about it because I just know, you know, now that my daughter's in middle school, like, you know, everything changes. She's in the sixth grade. Everything is even she's changing. You know, so. You you kind of go and roll with it, but you know you just um and I and I tell her her brothers I'm like look, you guys have to be mindful about what you say, about what you do. And I mean like I was talking to my youngest son, he was um he was in his room and he was playing some music and the music he wasn't playing the music in his AirPod and you know of course the music got you know language or whatever like that and I'm like hey bro put that in your ear. He's like well dad I'm just saying I was like man listen your sister is right down the hall. I was like I allow you to listen to this music because at this point i can't ban you from it because you're gonna find your way to it anyway just like we did coming up but i was like you know i don't want i it ain't time for her to be introduced to that just yet i mean she's gonna stumble upon it probably sooner than i like her to anyway so you know and i don't i can't explain cardi b and <laughs> Nicki minaj to a six uh, to a sixth grader i can't do that you know yeah. so that's a conversation that's going to gonna happen sooner than later so mm-hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. I I get it. I was uh, listening to the podcast when you talked about uh, football and relationships. From that podcast, which which part was your favorite? Which parallel of yours was probably the best one that you think you can give the advice to people listening or watching today? Um, I think the biggest thing that I took away from that podcast is just really um, one for me. It's it's very personal because. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. Football is my first love. Like before I loved any girl at the age of seven, I love, I fell in love with football and it's, it, it's still my first love. Now I love my wife, you know, that's, <laughs> that's my best friend. So I'm not, don't get it twisted. I'm not choosing her over football, but if I could play football, now let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't let her listen to this episode. But I get damage right, control. right, right. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, right. Way to bring me back in. Way to bring me back in. <laughs> um, but the thing that I took from it was like, you know, how much it, it mirrors the, the game of life mirrors, you know, football. And, you know, you got quarters and in each quarter, you know, just like the game of football, you got four quarters and we all have quarters of our life. And each play could be each day or each year. And you're going to have what they call negative plays, meaning like you're going to get tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Meaning when you equate that to life, you're going to have ups and downs at work. You may lose your job. You know, you're going to have bumps in the road when it, you're going to have bumps in the road in your relationship. You're going to have bumps in the road with friendships, family members. You know, how do you adjust when you get to halftime or when you get back, excuse me, when you get back to the sideline, how do you adjust? Do you, do you, can you, do you huddle up and say, Hey, Hey, let's, let's get this together. You know, I'm sure you and your wife do this. My wife and I do this. You know, it, it's it's um, I heard somebody say this once. Uh, you know, go through film session. You know, you know, like players after the week, they you know said they put you in front of the film and they're like, okay, hey, this is what you did wrong. This is what you messed up right here. You know, and you know, I'm sure your wife is kind of like mine. You know, they will tell you and show you this is where you messed up. They were showing the game so, film. Like when you're in that film session, 
Oh yeah, you gotta watch the game film. And when you watch the game film, can you course correct? Or are you gonna be in your feelings about being criticized? Mm. Not called out. There's a difference between being criticized and being called out, you know. And there's a lot of film sessions in my house. Um <laughs> and your wife we've had a lot of her. film sessions over the years. Now, oh yeah. Hey, oh, but trust me, I got a click too now. I I, I keep a click on that. I keep one on deck, you know what I'm saying? So, no, don't get it twisted. We both have a film session. But I think part of that goes to just, you know, like I said, in a game, you have to adjust. The games that we watch each Sunday, they're really adjusting on the fly. You know, every time there's an offensive possession, the offense goes out there and let's say they get a three and out. Okay, now they got to come to the sideline. So when the defense goes out, the offense on the side, they're, what we don't see on camera is that they're regrouping. They come back in and talking. Okay, hey, what did you see? Well, I saw this. This right here might work. And honestly, in a relationship, in a friendship, in a marriage, that's constant. That's that's what we should be doing. Um, sometimes we can get a little busy and we get away from that. And when we get away from that, you know what happens, Sean? We tend to kind of start freelancing. We're not running the plays that was called. We're out there doing our own thing. And then you have to kind of be slapped by reality and say, and you know, sometimes God will show you like, nah, you ain't doing this by yourself now. This, this is supposed to be a team thing. So let's, so you work within the confinements of the team. So that's one of the things that I learned, like just how to move throughout the quarters. And what I've learned over li- over a period of lifetime is that, you know, you even with, with your su- successes, you know, you celebrate them. You don't get too caught up in them. And with your failures, failures, you don't get too caught up in them either because you're going to have successful plays. You're going to have negative plays. But if you play the game and you play the game long enough in life, not just outside of a marriage or friendship or relationship, if you play it long enough and you keep playing and, you be, and you're persistent, you're going to have more success than failures. Can you handle it? And can you build on each success? And, um, and by success, I don't mean that you got to be the you know, CEO of a Fortune 500 company. But, you know, be the better you each day. And, um, you know, that's one of the things I took from the podcast, just figuring out how to navigate throughout the quarters and then, you know, course correct along the way and be able to give and take constructive criticism. Mm, Yeah, that's powerful. I like that part of the show when you talked about that, (laughs) because I'm like, oh, we got to talk about that. Oh, we got to talk about that. (laughs) Right. And. I like it because even you can look at the the Jacksonville and San Diego game. Facts. I thought it was over. I was like, I did too. Boy, I'm saying this boy Trevor Lawrence threw what four picks in that game? Four picks. Four picks in a in a half. In a half, right? And I'm thinking, your relationship, your marriage, your life, your friendship, you can really turn that thing around in the halftime. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Uh, because. Lord knows how many interceptions I threw on my last marriage. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I was Trevor Lawrence. So, mm-hmm. um, but now that I'm remarried, I was able to turn that thing around and, and, and win right. eventually. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I and, like that. You and and you just, that. you learn to take it play by play. I mean, like, I'm sure the Jacksonville coach, when they went in the half, because it's not, there's really not much you can say to a team when you're down 27 nothing at halftime. The thing that you can tell them is like, look, we ain't going to get it all back in one play. So let's just focus on each play, each day, one by one, bit by bit. And it's it sounds simple, but I mean, that's really how should we, we should attack life. We should be looking forward, of course. But, you know, you ain't going to get it all back in one day. You ain't going to get it. I mean, we all would love to hit the lottery. <laughs> but the reality is we ain't going to do it. So we most of us are going to have to get up and go to somebody's job or our own job or, you know, work for ourselves to earn a living and then go from there. So, um, yeah, it, it's, you, you're right. You, you're going to throw some interceptions. You're going to have some turnovers. You're going to have some fumbles. You're going to have some penalties. Pen- a penalty could be as simple as hurting, hurting someone's feelings, mm-hmm. but how do you bounce back from that? And then, you know, the thing is you don't want to keep making the same penalties. You know, I, one of the things my coach used to tell us in college all the time, he's like, he said, I can deal with a penalty. He said, but I can't deal with a lazy penalty. You know what a lazy penalty is, Sean? Jumping off side. How you gonna jump off sides? You you know the play, you know when the count is. What you jumping off sides for? You know, uh, he said he could he could understand a hustle penalty. A hustle penalty would be something like 
you know, I don't know, hitting somebody as they're going out of bounds. You shouldn't do it, but it happens. But I correlate that between in life and saying that, you know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes in finance. You're going to make mistakes in a marriage. You're going to make mistakes in your friendships and your relationships with your family, maybe with your kids. How do you bounce back from it? It, it? Nothing is a fail shot. As long as we're alive, we still got a chance to turn things around. So uh, that's that's my mindset. Mm, yeah, I like that because some relationships, they just got too many penalties. <laughs> They just got too many. <laughs> they just, you know, right. you, yeah, you look at the stat sheet and you just like, this is mm-hmm. the most penalized relationship in the league. Mm-hmm. Y'all need to start, you know, at square one. You know, mm-hmm. y'all, y'all need to, maybe I need to start over. Maybe you need to trade. Maybe you need to go and play for another team. Yeah. You know, and that's if anybody <laughs> want to pick you up because they know how many penalties you've occurred over exactly. your. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And, you know, it's it, sometimes you got to regroup like that and say, well, you know what? This ain't working. You know, it is maybe we need a new playbook. Maybe we just need to be on different teams, you know, and that happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you've seen players flourish when they play for other teams. You know, mm-hmm. uh, what, what what's that? Your boy, and sometimes uh, it's about being on it. Go ahead. No, no I, I was going to say sometimes it's just about with another team. You're more appreciated more appreciated you know yeah because your boy uh the one guy uh ingram i think he played for he played for the giants i think but he mm-hmm. played for jacksonville now i think and he yep. he getting he getting run you know what i'm saying so you just he, never know he, he sean he he couldn't catch a cold in new york <laughs> um but he's flourishing in jacksonville so i'm happy for him i mean i wish it would have worked in new york. new york gave him opportunities it just it didn't work. I mean, but it was under a different regime and everything like that. And sometimes that's why you see players kind of bounce around because, you know, sometimes the scheme doesn't fit. Sometimes they don't fit. Um, but you see them flourish in other places. So, you know, I mean, guy you mentioned earlier, Brett Favre. Brett Favre was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. But Brett Favre was a alcoholic. And um, there's, a, there's a section of the city called Buckhead he used to be really famous for bars. It was a famous bar district. And they used to call him Buckhead Brett. Because, like, he would go, he would leave Falcons practice and go get hammered and be drunk, like, at practice the next day. Like, he was, re- like, he was two seconds away from being cut from the Falcons. And so they was like, before we cut you, we're going to trade you to Green So they traded him to Green Bay for, like, fish heads and rice. And he stopped drinking, and the rest is history. Wow. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Man, before we end this, I wanted to talk about, because I was watching Deion Sanders, uh, I mm-hmm. was watching his show, but there was a, a, a clip that I saw of his that never left me, and he was saying how as a cornerback, uh, what position did you play in college? Uh, wide receiver. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> there was a, um, Deion Sanders talked about as a cornerback, his coaches used to teach him, and we're talking about prime time. His coaches just teach him that if you get beat for a play, Mm -hmm. it's okay. You got to have short-term memory as a cornerback because you're going to be facing this guy all game. So you can't be thinking about what just happened on the last play, even though you got scorched in front of the whole stadium. But you got to have – you got to move on. You can't think about that. Every new play is different. And I think about this, too, even in a marriage and a relationship, like – if you if something happened in your relationship, you got to have short term memory. You can't keep dwelling on that last play that you got beat. So if you still bring enough stuff from the past, because I realize a lot of relationships struggle because they can't stay on topic about what they're arguing about now. <laughs> they steady talking about the play that they got beat in the first quarter. It's the fourth quarter, right? So how how do how important is forgiveness in a relationship and how important is it to not bring up old stuff and how do you even resolve those things? Great question. Um, it is very important. If you want your relationship or friendship or marriage to last, um, forgiveness, if we go back to the Bible, forgiveness starts from within. So if you committed a penalty, Sean, if you, you know, you stepped outside and did something that you wasn't supposed to do, you know, yeah, it's easy for you to say, well, hey, I stepped out on you. 
I forgive me. But even in that, it's it's very important that you forgive yourself for what it, because, you know, there's a level of guilt and shame that comes with that. But also, you know, okay, now, and I'm not just, I mean, I, I gave an example of infidelity, but it could be anything. Whatever the mistake is made, it's important that you forgive yourself. And then you work towards having your significant other, your spouse, your wife, your friend, whomever, forgive you. And that's a that's pro, that's a work in progress. Um, because if you, you know, messed up our money, you know, and have our bank account overdrawn by 10 grand, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I'm gonna trust you with our money anymore, you know, and that goes into the word trust. Um, but forgiveness is very important because like I said, you have to forgive yourself first and then that other person has to forgive you. Um, but the, the great part that you asked is how do you move forward? I think I think it's it's not simple, but it's like Sean, you you have to have one conversation, and in that one conversation, you tell your wife or your significant other, your spouse, whomever, you say, "Look, say what you got to say. I'm gonna sit here, and I'm gonna take it, and we're gonna we're gonna hash it out right here. And however long this conversation, if this is a five hour conversation, then let it be. If you gotta cuss me out, if you gotta cry, if you gotta call your mom and them." everybody that's cool but when we're done with this conversation this isn't coming up anymore so everything that you got to say put it all in the put push your chips to the table it's cool i'm not gonna like it but i'm here to take everything is everything in that you're about to say but when we leave this conversation and i give you my rebuttal and we go back and forth or whatever the case may be however long this ends is once it ends it's over we're not discussing it anymore. So if she stepped out on you, Sean, and you're ready to cuss her out and chew her out and throw her clothes in the middle of the floor and set them on fire, <laughs> after all of that's done, if you decide to, to move forward with her, it has to end that day. What I mean is that conversation has to end and you have to take the steps to move past that and by, by not verbalizing it. Now, now granted, you, you're not going to walk away from that conversation and be like, all right, well, you cheated on me, so I'm cool now. No, you're still going to be hurt. And there's still going to be moments where you're going to cry and be mad or whatever like that. But I, I think you do yourself a disservice if y'all talk, y'all have this talk on Monday and then two weeks later, you bringing it back up. Or two months later, you bringing it back up. You know, she she can't ever move forward with you like that. And then you have to ask, and, and that's why you have to have that one big conversation and then ask yourself, can I move forward from here? Because if you can't move forward from there, that's fine. But at least you're being honest with them and honest with yourself. The problem is, I think sometimes we see, and you, I know you see it a lot, where couples um, get into those type of situations, whether it be infidelity, finance, or whatever the case may be, and they say, okay, well, hey, we'll just move on, and they never move on. And then, like you said, you're throwing it back up in their face, and then the, per- the person that did it, they're like, well, damn, man, when are you going to get over that? When are you going to let me? When are you going to let me live? And they're like, live, you, you know, you did this to me. And then so it's me, 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 me. And that other person's hurting too, even though they were the perpetrator. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, forgiveness is, is, is definitely something possible. It's not something that happens overnight. It's not something that happens. There's, there's an infinite amount of time before it happened. You don't, I mean, to be honest, in that scenario, you don't know when forgiveness is going to happen, but you go day by day, step by step. And, you know, you you stay away from throwing it up in each other's face. Cause I think once you do that, then what you're telling yourself and what you're telling the other person is I'm not over this and I'm going to continue to punish me the way that you punish. I'm going to continue to punish you the way that you punished me. And that's not fair to either one of you. Mm-hmm. Man, that's good. Yeah. Because you could have cheated with somebody who, who wore orange. Maybe there was a Cleveland Browns. Fan. <laughs> so the minute that they see orange, they like, Oh, but you were sleeping mm-hmm. with, with her, huh? Oh, anytime mm-hmm. you see orange, you know. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. anytime. So it's always coming back. Yeah, I, I like that. That's that's important. Like you said, it's not easy, but it can be done. I've seen, I've literally coached couples back into staying uh, together, even though I went through a divorce. But, I, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's one of those things that you live and you learn. Um, and people have recovered from that. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, yeah, so man, 
this has been a powerful show, man. Uh, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Oh, definitely. You can catch me on socials uh, at 12 Kyle. The podcast is at 12 Kyle podcast. Um, make sure that you check out the podcast. The podcast is called the 12 Kyle podcast. Uh, a new episode drops every Thursday at midnight um, and subscribe. So because from time to time we drop bonus episodes on Sundays at midnight, uh, I talk about sports. I talk about relationships. I talk about um, I talk a lot about the life that we lived before the Internet, um, personal experiences, things that you can relate to. A lot of music talk, mu old school music, you know, the music that we grew up on in the 80s and 90s. And um, the thing I say about the podcast, I'll share with your listeners, is that confidently speaking, if you listen to one episode, you'll listen to another. And that's all I want. You know, I don't, you know, every episode ain't for you, even though I want you to listen to them all, but every episode ain't for you. But I promise you, I promise you this. If you listen to one, you'll listen to another one. That's true. I'm I'm a witness. I totally agree. I've been <laughs> listening to you for some years. You know what I'm saying? So appreciate yes. it, man. Same here. Same Yeah, here. man. For sure. Well, <clears throat> Bravehearts community, you heard it here first. Make sure you connect with 12 Kyle. I will have him linked up in uh, the comment section so you can subscribe to the podcast. If you're listening, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening, make sure that you subscribe to his podcast uh, and leave a rating and review because sometimes people forget that it's not always about money. Sometimes it's just about some of your time. You can mm -hmm. share, right? You can comment, you can rate and leave a review. You don't always have to come out your pocket, even though that will help, you know, from time <laughs> to time. No, don't get it twisted. Yeah, I, I have a YouTube channel too. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to put up more video as it goes, but um, yeah, check, check out the YouTube channel too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I want to, first of all, I just want to acknowledge you real quick for, even though I've never met you in person, you are probably one of the most genuine people that I've ever met. I know that sounds funny. Appreciate but it, man. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so one of the most genuine people I've ever met and uh, is sharing your life experiences from, uh, sports to you know graduating college just so many different things that you discuss i feel like i've been knowing you for years through the podcast <laughs> i appreciate it that's 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 the goal that's the goal to to, to get pe people to peek in a little bit on your life so i, I appreciate it. and i feel the same about you man like i said you you drop gems almost every day on social media and i appreciate the transparency because you know it it we came up in, and I'm a little bit older than you, but we came up in the same era where it wasn't cool for guys to just talk about how they feel. And you do it so you you, you just flow with it and you do it so effortlessly. And that's why you have, you know, people that, that follow you and rock with you for as long as they have been. And that's why you've been success, man. Keep on. And again, I appreciate you, my brother. This is, this is always fun to get on here, man. Yeah, for sure. Well, you heard it here, Brave Arts community. Make sure you make that connection. This is Sean Heineman with special guests. 12 Kyle. Appreciate you. Yes. Take care, people.